Hey, it's Denise. Welcome to my channel. Um, welcome back if you've been watching my videos before. And uh, here I am with another, just a few items that uh, arrived today for the dog. I know. I know. I'm so psyched for this dog. And that's not to say that my dog that I have isn't wonderful. My little Jay is wonderful. He's 15 years old. He's a beagle. Um, he's kind of a couch potato. He's kind of king of the living room. But I have not had a puppy in 15 years. And uh, so, yeah, the idea of getting to know a new uh, little one is kind of exciting. And the fact that this little one is specifically, hopefully, going to work out as my mobility service dog makes it even more special. So, the couple new things I got. Uh, these are exactly the same. Uh, it's the same collar in small and medium. So I figured she's going to outgrow collars fast, and I didn't want to be caught not able to get the kind that I wanted once I found the kind that I wanted. And it is, uh, I went with a martingale collar, which if you're not familiar, it's sort of a compromise between just a regular flat collar, you know, your standard just around the neck and, and buckle collar, which a lot of dogs learn to just back out of, and the collar slips off over their head, and then your dog can take off. Um, I would hate to, to have my dog get lost because of that, um, especially when she's a puppy and she's still learning her name, learning, you know, to come back when called, all the things that you do in obedience training. Uh, but a very young puppy doesn't know those things yet, and obviously I would not want her to get lost. I know the poodles I grew up with, and I know my beagle, uh, all had small enough heads relative to how thick their neck is that both, both poodles and the beagle all knew how to duck their head out and take a quick step backwards and pull out of the collar. So the answer to that is either you go with like a slip collar, otherwise known sometimes as a choker collar. The more you pull on it, like it's kind of like a little noose, and the more you pull on it, just the tighter that circle around their neck gets. But the compromise in between the two is what they call a martingale collar. And if you look at it, like say this is how it's set on, you know, it's just sitting around her neck, regular, it's a little bit loose, and, you know, it's comfy, the regular way you would want it to fit, you know, they can get a couple fingers in there, it's not too tight. I'm probably going to have to use my, my arm here, because uh, if I'm trying to give you any idea of how it actually works. So what would happen is, this is where the, this little metal piece, right, is where I have the, the leash on it. Just say she went to pull her head back to slip out, and this is loose enough, you know, that her head could just slip right out. When I pull on the leash, you'll see that those two metal, this pulls up, and it pulls these two metal rings towards each other, which means it brings in about two inches of length of the collar. And now you can see it's tight around my arm. Not tight enough to dig in or choke, but tight enough to hopefully stop the dog's head from being able to slip out of the collar. So it's a good safety device that is not a choker. It's not going to pull, no matter how hard it pulls, like say she got caught on something, say she ran out of the house and this got caught on something, it's not going to pull any tighter than that. So it's not going to turn into like a, a regular choker collar that if they just kept pulling, it would just keep getting tighter. So. This uh, martingale collar is what I wanted to go with, so I like pink. She's going to be a black poodle, so I think the bright color will stand out nicely against her coat. So I went ahead and I got the small and I got the medium, exact same thing, just the next size up. And uh, I just feel like that's a really good choice safety-wise in terms of a collar. Two more things. Uh, this one, I got another long line. Now I have a flat, uh, just flat nylon 20-foot lead. 
this, I went, uh, now these are for when you're working with your dog outside and like practicing that come back when called, kind of giving them a false sense that you don't have control of them because they can walk further away. This one is 50 feet long. And as you can see, it's not flat, it's rolled, uh, it's, it's nylon, it's like a round rolled nylon, and supposedly being rolled instead of flat makes it less likely to snag on every little thing that it goes past or on the ground. So if she and I are like in an open area, we can sort of play a little bit of, you know, throwing a toy and, and fetching or letting her kind of just walk around me and s learning to stay in my general area, not wandering away from me and without a tight little, you know, just a few foot leash between us, her still keeping in her mind that when I call her, she needs to come back. And if she doesn't come back, I don't have to worry that she can run away because we are connected. And we can be quite literally collect connected because it has hooks on both ends. So I could wrap one end around my waist and use it as a hands-free. Um, and basically, you know, just kind of be hanging out, sitting outside doing things. I like to garden personally. And she could be walking around, exploring, doing her own thing a little bit. But she's still where if I had to kind of reel her in, I could. Or if we were more actively out there walking, obviously I would be kind of reeling this in, letting it out, reeling it in, you know, so as not to let her get tangled up in it and not to have me getting tangled up in it. But it's a good way of giving your dog that sense of that they are away from you. Like, like I said, it's 50 feet long and practicing having them come back when you call their name while you, uh, really have them on leash the entire time. Uh, so I just, you know, I figured the 20 foot one was nice to start with while she's real little, but I figured in the spring, once we are over the whole snow thing, and there are lots of open fields around here where there would be room for us to do a 50 foot, uh, lead to, to play with. I thought it would be good to have. And again, I just went with a nice bright color that I figured would stand out against the grass. So that's that. Last thing I got, I kind of mentioned in the last video when I was talking about the um, uh, the treat bag I got that also had a uh, dispenser, like a holder with a dispenser for poop bags in it. I mentioned that I, I ordered these non-plastic biodegradable poop bags. Now, I think when I, when I did the math, when you buy them in a, a larger box like this, they are, they come out to, it was like either three or four cents a bag. This is 540 bags in this box. Um, and again, no plastics involved and it's biodegradable. So this is compostable. Again, if you're a gardener, you're not going to put dog poop in, in the compost for your garden, obviously. But as far as like throwing it into a wooded area or something, it's going to break down just like the deer poop and bear poop and whatever else might be pooping out there. Your end, uh, the bag is going to completely break down. There is no plastic. It's made, I think, from some sort of cornstarch type. I, I believe it's a corn product that they start with to make these. So, yeah, I, felt, I just felt like buying single-use plastic bags that, you know, every day you're going to be using these and throwing them in the garbage. To me, that's just like throwing so much plastic into the landfill that it didn't make sense. It felt like the responsible thing to do is just to go ahead and get these uh, ones that are biodegradable and not made of plastic. So, and it, the price is not that much higher. So three or four cents a bag, I would much rather pay that and know that I'm uh, not hurting the planet. So that was our little mini haul for today. The uh, Essentially two of the same collar, the 50 foot lead and the biodegradable poop bags. And I am just working on organizing her room. I need to get some hooks on the walls 
I think I'm just going to go with those inexpensive uh, self-adhesive white plastic hooks just to hang um, leashes, harnesses, uh, anything. Almost there's so many things already to hang up. The little collapsible water bowls that, because I don't want to let her little cabinet just have, you know, be shoved full of stuff. I want to keep it organized. So I figure if it's something that can be hung up, I want to hang it up. So that's kind of going to be what I'm doing probably over the next few days in terms of just, you know, it's great to get a lot of stuff for your dog, but if you can't find it when you need it, then what good is it to you? So I want to make sure that I keep it organized so that I can find things when I need them. So uh, I hope you found this informative. hope it gave you maybe some ideas of things to do with your puppy or dog, especially like the long leash or using the martingale collar if they are a dog that tries to slip their head out of their collar and you don't want to take the chance of them, um, you know, that, that a uh, traditional choke type collar or slip collar uh, can cause. Now, in the hands of a trainer who knows what they're doing, a slip collar is a useful tool. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying I personally prefer that added safety of knowing that I can adjust how tight it can get and that it can't get any tighter than that. Um, what if I accidentally dropped the leash and she ran away and the leash got caught on something? You know, if we're a regular slip collar, choker collar, it could strangle her. Um, so I don't want to take that chance. I would much rather have the martingale type collar. So that's just an opinion. People use all different kinds of collars. I'm not judging or, you know, condemning anyone's choice. This is just my personal choice for what I'm going to do with my dog. Who I am also going to train to wear a harness. Um, if she becomes a service dog, she's going to have to get used to wearing different types of gear. And so, you know, the younger the better, getting her used to wearing things. So please uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've used any of these things or what type of things you use to help your dog learn while you're trying to teach it. It's uh, come when called. And, uh, you know, if you have any particular safety tips for when you are uh, teaching a new puppy uh, to be safely outside with you in an open area, I'd be interested to know uh, if you used any particular items. Uh, obviously, I'll be, you know, doing clicker training and using a, a reinforcing word along with the clicker to, you know, help her know when she's doing the right thing to help her learn what it is that I want her to do. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I always say it twice because I feel like when you say it once, the first time people just kind of, they kind of just ignore you. I really appreciate it, though, when people do those things. So please do. And uh, as always, thank you for taking the time to watch. I truly appreciate it. Have a great day. And uh, like I said, let me know in the comments if you've used any of these products or if you've found products that you like and have had a good experience with.